The Grand Cosmos, a glimpse into the beginning. Our universe is a vast and mysterious place. It's filled with billions of galaxies, each containing billions of stars. But how did it all begin? How did this immense, complex universe come to be? The answer, most cosmologists believe, lies in an event called the Big Bang. This wasn't an explosion in the traditional sense, but rather an expansion. An expansion from a state of unimaginable density and heat. Imagine the entire observable universe, everything we see and know, compressed to a size smaller than an atom. This was the singularity, the starting point of everything. Then, approximately 13.8 billion years ago, this singularity began to expand. It wasn't an explosion into pre-existing space, it was the expansion of space itself. This expansion continues to this day, stretching the very fabric of space-time. As the universe expanded, it cooled, and energy began to transform into matter. This process led to the formation of the first elementary particles, the building blocks of everything we observe. From these humble beginnings, the universe embarked on an incredible journey of evolution, giving rise to stars, galaxies, planets, and ultimately, life itself. The story of the universe's origins is a tale of incredible transformation, a cosmic drama that continues to unfold even now. From singularity to expansion, the Big Bang. The Big Bang theory is the prevailing cosmological model for the universe. It describes the universe from its earliest known periods through its subsequent large-scale evolution. The theory rests on two main pillars, general relativity and the cosmological principle. General relativity, developed by Albert Einstein, describes the gravitational interaction of matter and energy. It explains the behavior of massive objects like stars and galaxies and predicts phenomena like black holes and gravitational waves. The cosmological principle states that on a large scale, the universe is homogeneous and isotropic. This means that the universe looks roughly the same from any point and in any direction. In the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang, the universe underwent a period of rapid inflation. During this epoch, space itself expanded at an exponential rate. This inflation stretched out any initial wrinkles in the fabric of space-time, leading to the remarkably smooth universe we observe today. As the universe expanded and cooled, energy began converting into matter, following Einstein's famous equation, EMC2. This process gave rise to a sea of fundamental particles, including quarks, leptons, and bosons. These particles interacted with each other, forming protons, neutrons, and eventually, the first atoms. This era, known as the era of recombination, marked a crucial transition in the universe's history. Stellar nurseries, the birth of stars and galaxies. Over millions of years, gravity began to sculpt the universe. Slight variations in density in the early universe, amplified by the expansion, created regions where matter clumped together. These clumps of matter, primarily hydrogen and helium gas, became the seeds of galaxies. Within these nascent galaxies, denser regions of gas collapsed under their own gravity. As these regions contracted, they heated up, eventually reaching temperatures and pressures high enough to ignite nuclear fusion in their cores. This fusion process, converting hydrogen into helium, marked the birth of stars. The first stars were massive, hot, and short-lived. They bathed the surrounding gas with intense ultraviolet radiation, ionizing it and shaping the evolution of the early universe. As these stars exhausted their fuel, they exploded as supernovae, seeding the cosmos with heavier elements forged in their cores. The remnants of these supernovae, enriched with heavier elements, provided the raw materials for subsequent generations of stars and planetary systems. These later generations of stars, formed in the hearts of galaxies, were more diverse in size, temperature, and lifespan, laying the foundation for the complex structures we observe in the universe today. Our Cosmic Cradle Formation of the Solar System About 4.6 billion years ago, in a relatively quiet corner of the Milky Way galaxy, a giant molecular cloud began to collapse. This cloud, composed mainly of hydrogen, helium, and trace amounts of heavier elements, was the birthplace of our solar system. As the cloud contracted, it began to spin faster and faster, forming a rotating disk of gas and dust. At the center of this disk, gravity pulled in more and more material, eventually forming a protostar, the nascent sun. The sun's intense gravity continued to draw in material from the surrounding disk, further increasing its mass and temperature. 
Finally, the pressure and temperature at the sun's core became high enough to ignite nuclear fusion, and our sun was born. Meanwhile, in the outer regions of the disk, dust grains collided and stuck together, gradually forming larger and larger clumps. These clumps, known as planetesimals, continued to grow through accretion, eventually forming planets, moons, and other objects in our solar system. The inner region of the disk, closer to the sun, was too hot for volatile compounds like water and methane to condense. Consequently, the inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, formed primarily from rocky materials. In contrast, the outer region of the disk was cold enough for these volatiles to freeze, leading to the formation of the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and their icy moons.